Sunnyside family and Sunnyside friends. Today, in lieu of our reg regularly scheduled broadcast, we're doing something a little different today. As many of you know, we are all grieving the loss of our wonderful deacon, Deacon Angel Vanderpool, and we decided today to go ahead and honor him in our broadcast today with tributes and well wishes and prayers. Um, the Bible tells us in Romans 12 and 15 to rejoice with those who rejoice and to weep with those who weep. We celebrate his life, but we weep with the Vanterpool family and the Green family and all those that are involved. We weep with them because we've lost a great man. We've lost a great soldier. And some things are very hard, but, you know, we, we trust in the sovereignty of our almighty God. But enjoy this today. And let's reflect on his life and all he contributed, not only to the East Sunnyside family, but to so many people around these, this country, this world. He was really a man's man. So we just appreciate him and we appreciate God for sharing his life uh, with us. God bless you all. We'll get back to you after this.
We're having a wonderful time out here at our REACH Conference uh, 2016 at the Church of God of Prophecy at 4610 Sunflower. Hey, Pastor, how you doing today? I'm great. He's enjoying our ba ba Bahamas book um, that we have donated. We have um, a lot of different vendors here as well. If you have the opportunity to come out, if you can't make it this year, we'll see you next year. We're having a great time. Very good. Be blessed. I want you to stand on your feet. And just say hallelujah. 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 One more time. Hallelujah. 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 I want to say glory out of us. Glory out of us. Glory out of us. Amen. Amen. You, you may be seated. Se pueden sentar. In Galatians chapter 6, verse 10. In Galatas capítulo 6, versículo 10. Instructs us. Nos enseña. As we have therefore the opportunity. Porque hemos tenido la oportunidad. Let us do good. Vamos a hacer bien. Unto all men. A todo hombre, especially especialmente unto them who are que están of the household of faith. En la casa de Did you enjoy yourself? I enjoy myself and time love experience. <laughs> <laughs>
shark, do 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 daddy shark, do 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 daddy shark. Grandma shark, do 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 grandma shark, do 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 grandma shark, do do. Brother Angel, I don't have the words to express how I feel the, the hurt in my heart for us not having you with us any longer. But I know that our loss is heaven's gain. I know that God never, ever makes a mistake. I want to thank God for you being in our life when Brother Davis and I came east side of to pastor. You were always there for us. You made reservations for us to go to the assembly. You just made sure that we were taken care of. I remember driving the Yukon, the big old truck we had out to the VA, and I didn't like to drive it. We had to leave Brother Davis out there. I called you and you brought Amy, and you brought the Yukon home, and Amy brought me home. I will never forget all your kindness. Even if I needed someone to clean my rug, you had somebody there. If I needed a tie chain, Whatever I needed, you were there. And I want you to know that I am so grateful. And I want you to know we will take care of your family to the best of our ability. And until, until then, our hearts will go and sing your angel. Until then, with joy, we're going to carry on. Until the day our eyes behold the city. Until the day God calls us home. Good night, angel. We love you. We're going to miss you something terrible. But see you later. Pleasant dreams. Good night. My name is Cynthia Wilson. And one of our fondest memories of Brother Angel is the time that we were going on vacation, taking a cruise out of Puerto Rico. And we left our phones at the airport in Miami. Well, we bought some burner phones and decided we'd call our daughter and have her call uh, Angel to tell him that we were supposed to meet his uncle and aunt the next day in the Virgin Islands. So she called him, he called them, they called us on our burner phones, and that was a blessing, really, that we got a chance to meet with them. And not only that, he sent us a blessing, some money to spend while we were on vacation. Yes. It was just a great, great time. You know, uh, we miss him, we will miss him, uh, because when we, when we were pastor in our church before we came to East Sunnyside, he um, would come by the church several times on Sunday. We had service at 8.30 on Sunday morning. Right. And several times a month, he would come by and visit with us. So he'll be well missed. My brother is a great brother. So we'll miss him to Amy and the family. God bless you all, and we'll be here for you. And we will be praying. God bless. Hey, uh, Ken Booker here. On behalf of my parents, KW and Charlene Booker of Spring, Texas, uh, they send their prayers to the family and the entire congregation of East Sunnyside. Uh, family. They send their prayers. Uh, Angel was a phenomenal man. He was amazing. He was flawless. He was a man of character. You just don't get a better cut, a better grade, a better caliber of a man than that he was. And, um, you know, having said that, admiration requires imitation. Whatever you admire, you imitate. He was someone to imitate. Uh, you know, even growing up at the ages of 12 and 13 years old, uh, he's just done wonderful things in my life, uh, you know, showing me how to be a, a better person, a better man. Uh, you know, at camp, we had a lot of competitions on, you know, um, the waves in our hair and our shiny shoes and wearing a tie and dressing. I mean, he just instilled a lot of things in us at 13, 14, 15 years old. We didn't really understand why, but I understand why today. Uh, and so I'm just gratified um, that he's, you know, had that type of character in him 20 plus years ago. I can remember at camp that, you know, you had to be in Angel's cabin. If you was not in his cabin, 
he really wasn't even cool. <laughs> you know, to be that's that's just being honest. You know, it was almost like Angel had a waiting list. Uh, you know, for people to be in his cabin. Uh, we may not have had all the baseballs and softballs and basketballs, but he made it happen at camp. And I, I can recall, I mean, he had this great idea to go on a 30,000 mile walk. That means it was a very long walk, very long. And we had to sing God's Got Our Army. We're all walking and singing. We get tired. He's like, wait a minute, I don't hear nobody singing. And we just sung all the way and we had fun. Um, he turned that little campground into a, a, a heaven. And it's, it's almost like he was God's go-to man. He had the answers. You know, you needed wisdom. He had, you needed support. You needed counseling. He had the answers. He was always serving. He was a servant. He was always out there on the battlefield serving. And so I'm just gratified uh, for him to be in, our, in my life and to the, to the family. You guys be encouraged. Uh, don't let the enemy defeat you. Don't let the devil dominate you. Uh, you continue to dominate your day. Uh, dominate that devil when you wake up. You guys be encouraged. We love you and our hearts. We stand with you. Our hearts are with you. Everyone, my name is Robert Lee Brown. I served as the Minister of Music and Choir Director here at the Church of God of Prophecy at East Sunnyside for nearly 30 years. And of that 30 years, Angel Vanderpool served about 20 plus years as the Assistant Choir Director. One thing I can truly say about Angel, he was energetic. He had a way of getting the choir all hyped up. And I know he loved the choir. I know he loved working with the choir. So right now, I'm just imagining Angel up there directing that heavenly choir, right on King Jesus. He'll welcome you. Those are just two of the songs that really stuck out when I think of Angel Vanderpool. He would be greatly missed by all. I'm very sure of that. Amy, I'm praying for the family. Children, be there for your mom. Look after your mom. God bless you all. Until we meet again. Hi, Angel. want to extend our sincerest condolences and our love and our prayers uh, to you during this difficult time. We wanted to just wish you well and let you know that uh, we uh, really miss Angel. We, as we think about the times that we've spent together in ministry, uh, one of the things that Angel taught me was that uh, it was okay to laugh at yourself. Uh, and he gave us many, many opportunities to laugh. And because of that, uh, his ability to be flawed but still be genuine and be able to laugh at himself, it'll, it took the pressure off of us as young people trying to do ministry. And it let us know that if one of our leaders could be imperfect and still serve, that there was an opportunity for us to serve as well. So I thank Angel for being that genuine person that wasn't afraid to make mistakes, wasn't afraid to laugh at himself, wasn't afraid to, to, to take the hard hits sometimes. Uh, 
Angel was the kind of guy who would ask a question in a business meeting that he knew the answer to, but he loved everyone enough to ask that question to make sure that everyone knew what was going on. So uh, we miss him, uh, we love him, but the good thing about it is if, if we do the same thing that Angel did, we know that we have an opportunity to see him again. So I just want to encourage you and the family uh, to continue to live the life, continue to serve God, continue to trust Him, uh, and we will all be reunited at some point in the not too distant future. So God bless you, God keep you, and our prayers and our thoughts are with you. Brother Angel was so many things to us and our extended families. Our paths crossed many years ago here in Houston at our local church. He exemplified a positive meaning of a go-getter. Angel, as we all know, was a person who deeply cared for all who traversed his path. He was a very genuine human being. There was nothing or no time we can recall that we reached out to him for help or guidance. If he was unable to help at the moment, he would not stop until he had exhausted all avenues to ensure a resolve to the situation at hand. Our lives are now being metamorphosed as we have to now continue this earthly journey without him. When we look back over our lives and realize the impact he's made on earth, we are reminded of Hebrews 13 and 2, where it says, be careful not to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unaware. In our minds, we now realize God favored us with an earthly angel on away in the form of Brother Deacon Angel Vantapool, who is now in reality one of our heavenly angels. To his wife, Sister Amy, sons Shaquille, AJ, and daughter Alea, Mother Green, Aunt Ruby, siblings and extended families, we extend our deepest condolences. May his soul rest in peace. Hello, everybody. We are Greg and Andrea Taylor, and um, it is our honor um, to be with you and to honor um, a dear friend, Angel Vanderpool, this morning. Uh, we thank God for the privilege that we had to serve with him um, in ministry, in youth ministry, in camping ministry, um, in life. Uh, he was a, one of our sojourners. And... Um, one of the things that I remember most about him was how he served people. Uh, it seemed like anyone that had a need, he was there to serve. Um, seeing him do things in the background, uh, larger than life at camp, anywhere that he was, he had a servant's heart, but yes. also loved people full of life. Um, and so we have a few stories that uh, that just kind of bear that out this morning. And so, I. I have a story from a friend um, growing up in camp. Um, I would not know this story except for the fact um, that a mutual friend shared it with me. Um, and, and in the story, there was a cabin full of young senior campers. Um, and so in this day, this would have been during the time when Brother Pence was our camp coordinator. Um, but there were a group of young men who were on the basketball court um, playing basketball. And one of them goes up and he dunks a volleyball. And when he does, uh, to his chagrin, he ends up breaking his arm. And he basically, during that time, he knew if anybody told I'll have to go home. I don't want to go home from camp. And so he swore everyone to secrecy, would not tell anybody, and would not allow even the coordinator's son to um, rat on him because he didn't want to go home from camp because he'd broken his arm. So basically what happens is during this time, um, they get ready for service. Um, and my friend puts on a long sleeves shirt and covers the fact that his arm is broken and he goes to service, doesn't remember much of what happened that night, 
but what he remembers is what happened in the cabin after the lights were out. You see, what happened is a group of young men got into bed and the Spirit of the Lord was so thick in the room. An angel began to sing, there's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. And I know that it is the presence of the Lord. Sweet Holy Spirit, they began to sing in harmony. Sweet heavenly dove, stay right here with us, filling us with your love. And for these blessings, we lift our hearts in praise. Without a doubt, we'll know that we have been revived when we shall leave this place. And the Spirit of the Lord was so strong in the room. A young man sat up in his bed and he said, I can feel the presence of God. What do you guys want to do? An angel says, let's get up. And they all get up in their underwear and they're standing in the middle of the, the room there. An angel says, put your hands in. And as a team, this cabin all puts their hands in in the middle of the room. And my friend is in that, in that circle with angel. And they're praying and they're worshiping God. And angel is basically leading them that night as they're worshiping God. And so what happens as they're worshiping, there, there's a time that happens. An angel began to say, and you're going to have to forgive me um, if I cry. <laughs> angel began to say, fellas, I don't know what is going on right now, but God is in this room. What do you want to do? You know, and angel begins to pray, Lord, what's happening? What do you want to do right now? What do you want us to do? You tell us. We're going to stand here in the middle of this room and we're just going to worship you. And those young men began to worship God at the top of their lungs. The Holy Ghost began to fill that cabin. And he began to just work in those young men's lives. And the angel stopped. And they all got quiet and he said, boys, I don't know what God wants to do, but he wants to do something. Somebody isn't asking God for what he wants to give you. And while they were standing there, the light shone into the room and it shone on them as they were standing with their hands in the circle. And my friend could see the light that shone on their hands. And... They're praying, and he, my friend thought to himself, surely this isn't for me. Surely, you know, I've done too much. You know, who was it for? An angel stopped him, and he said, ask him, whoever it is, whoever you are, God is here. Ask him. <laughs> and my friend took his arm out of the circle and he took his broken arm and he laid it gently on top of the circle as they stood there as a team of young men worshiping God in, in truth, in spirit, in unity. <laughs> My friend conveyed to me that you could see the divot in his arm. But when they got done praying, you could hear angel, thank you, God. Thank you, Father. You've met us here. And my friend raised his arm to the Lord and the light shone on it and it popped twice and he was healed. He didn't go home from camp. <laughs> and, <laughs> but more than that was that God showed himself faithful to that group of men because of angels obedience that night. That's the servant of God that we know. That's the servant of God. The one that would serve God and love man without dissimulation. I don't know if you know what that means, <laughs> but it means I'm not gonna hide whether or not I love you. I'm not gonna hide how I truly feel, but love without dissimulation says, I love you. I love you. You're my brother. You're my sister. That's the servant that we knew in Angel. 
And as we pay tribute to him, we thank God for this man of God, this soldier of excellence. <laughs> <laughs> this man that would sing at the top of his lungs, I love Jesus, yes I do. <laughs> I love Jesus, how about you? <laughs> That's the man of God that we know, the sermon who would do anything <laughs> for his family, for his friends, <laughs> for strangers he never met. He was used of God mightily for God's purpose. And even though we had him for a short season, his legacy lives on. To you, Amy, to your children, Shaquille, Aaliyah, AJ, we bless you. We say God bless and we pray that that legacy continues to live on through his seed because that's the best thing that you can do is his children. He lived a legacy of faith, whether healed on this side or the other. He lived a legacy of faith. He is the healed of God. He is still the man of God. And that legacy lives on through your family, to his mother, to his sisters, to his extended family, the Benjamins. We love you. We are praying for you. And it is our honor to pay tribute yes. to our friend this morning. Yes. God bless you all. Bless you. Hello, everyone. I'm Bishop Kerbin McKinnon, along with my wife, uh, Sister Sylvia McKinnon. Uh, I'm a pastor of the Fresno Worship Center, Church of God of Prophecy. We uh, come to you just to join with you and blend our voices and offer our heartfelt and sincere condolences to Brother Angel Vanderpool's family, uh, to Sister Amy uh, and the children, and to, uh, and to Sister Rita Green and her family, along with Sister Ruby Vanderpool and the rest of the family. And also to um, uh, the Brother Benjamin, Mark, as well as Brother Michael, uh, and to all of the family, as my wife has said, we just want to offer our heartfelt condolences um, at the passing of Brother Angel. Uh, there are so many things that come to mind, but I was thinking back to the time that we first arrived here four years ago, and my phone rang, and it was Brother Angel. And he was saying to me, welcome to Texas. And he said to me, I'm going to be checking up on you from time to time just to see how you were doing. And you know how it is that so, so many times people tell us that and they don't remember, even though they have the best of intentions when they say it. But Brother Angel was different. Um, Brother Angel followed through and over these past four years have always reached out, have uh, uh, have always would call and just to check to see how we were doing. And it was just at the end of May, uh, the uh, beginning of June that he spoke to us again and uh, uh, just asked, I don't want anything. I was just checking on you to see how you were doing. Again, we had uh, such a wonderful exchange and he said, I will be calling you again. Um, when I when I think in terms of of how he loved and how he worked and what he, he would do uh, toward those that he, that he was friendly toward, my mind goes to the epistle of James chapter two and verse 23, where in that latter portion of the verse, it is recorded and uh, that God called Abraham his friend. Certainly, if God calls anybody his friend, I believe that he would include Brother Angel Vanderpool, who was such a marvelous example of a Christian steward in friendship, in work, and all that he did. Uh, I just want to say again that we want to join together with each of you offering prayers of comfort and our love to you in this most difficult time. Uh, 
We just pray that God will undergird you and strengthen you as you walk uh, through this difficult path. We want to say that we do love you yes. with God's love, and we are here to support you in any way that we can. Again, to Sister Amy, mm -hmm. uh, Sister Ruby, Sister Rita, uh, to Mark and his family, to our Brother Michael and his family, to the uh, uh, family of the East Sunnyside Church of God of Prophecy, along with their pastor, mm -hmm. Bishop Daryl Clark, to our state bishop, Brother Daniel Felipe and his wife, Sister Laura, and their family, and just to everyone across the state and all the friends and all of those who were touched by the life of this precious man of God, Brother Angel Vanderpool. Again, our hearts, our prayers, our love go out to you at this time. Please know that we are here. We love you with God's sweet and precious love. You can call on us. May the Lord bless you is our prayer. God bless you, saints. Hello, everyone. My name is Gladys Thompson. I am from the Brazoria Church of God of Prophecy, where Pastor Clive S. Varlack and First Lady Leona Varlack are my pastors. I am recalling times of fellowshipping with Brother Angel Vanderpool and times that I remember are very fond of is youth camp. And one instance, one year youth camp, I think we may have been 14, 15 years old, and Hale had decided that we were gonna do a church walk up in Water, Texas. We really thought we were just gonna be walking around the camp, but Aunt Hale actually got us out onto the freeway and he was moderating this church walk and when I tell you, he had us sweating. It was so hot that summer in Texas, but you did it because, and Hale told you, we finna do a church walk. We all had on our Camp Lost Pines shirts. We were singing camp songs, just encouraging people. You know, people were honking at us as we were walking up and down the road. And you know, if you're familiar with church camp, it's not a flat surface, it's healy. It's up and down, up and down. And and hell had us up and down those hills doing a church walk to encourage us to be on fire and motivated for God. Another time at church camp is when, um, I think it was young teen camp or maybe senior camp. We were all kind of in that adolescent age where we were liking boys or liking girls. And we were looking forward to church camp because we knew and hell was going to be a boy's cabin leader. And he was going to have all of the cute boys in his cabin. So you thinking that and hell going to like hook you up or whatever. And and hell wasn't having that. And hell had that whistle around his neck. He would blow that whistle anytime you got out of line or did something that he didn't approve of. No, nah, go to your cabin, uh, go to your cabin. Hey, hey, break it up down there. He always was looking out for us and say, and watching us to make sure that we straight stayed on the straight and narrow. But then he brought in the urban field during worship service. And if you remember Mary- Greetings from the Cox family. We will sincerely miss our dear brother in Christ, Deacon Angel Vanderpool. His joyous spirit was so infectious. As many have spoken before, he never met a stranger. We hope that all who met him will remember the, the special times that they had and cherish those memories. Sister Amy, Shaq, AJ, Aaliyah, Mother Green, Sister Ruby, we love you and we are praying for you. May God bless you. Greeting in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to the Vanderpool family. I was thinking about what to say to the Vanderpool family that could encourage them about a son, a husband, a brother, a cousin, and nephew. And Angel favorite scripture was from Luke chapter 6 and 38, and it says, Give, and it shall be given unto you. 
good measures, press them and shake it together. And run it over. Shall man give into your bosom, for with the same measure that ye met, with all it shall be measured to you again. And I'm like, Holy Spirit, angel always with this. Press down, shake it together. And I'm like, okay, give me something to encourage this family. So this is a demonstration that the Holy Spirit gave to me. It says, this is angel, which is the outside of the glass. And inside is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. So it says, the more God pour into angel and it run over, is the more Donna get a little from him. I am gonna get a little from him. Bishley get a little from him. And myself get a little from him. And so everybody that he ran into, every way he go got a little from him. So you don't have to worry because God got him in his hand. So from the half of the Baptist family, May God bless you and give you peace that passeth all understanding. Hallelujah. Amen. Hello, family. Uh, forgive the backdrop and my attire. I'm on vacation in Kentucky visiting Jennifer's family. I wanted to drop this tribute to you all on behalf of Angel. What a great man. What a great friend. What a great servant of God. When I think of Angel, I think of a foot-washing servant. He was a servant of servants. There was nothing he wouldn't do for people, nothing he would not do for God. What a loving husband and father. What, a, what an example for all of us to follow. One of the first men when I became a born-again Christian in 1994 to wrap his loving arms around me and to guide me in the faith. Pastor Daryl, Amy, East Sunnyside, kids, we love you. Liberty Worship Center loves you. Pastor Shannon loves you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I just have to say that I am so grateful and blessed to have known Angel. And I'm so glad that, you know, God put him in my family's life because he helped my dad so much and up until my dad passed away he was just such an integral part um, to the point that you know when my dad passed away the first person that I thought of to help us with the arrangements was Angel and uh, that was because he was one of the ones that my dad trusts to take us across the street and across the city and across the state and across the country. And uh, I'm just grateful that God just placed him where he placed him in our lives because as a youth, he just did so much. And I just can't say how many things, but God just blessed our family. And um, I'm just grateful for him. And I'm grateful for the ministry that he has done, as well as just being a family member that that my parents could call on, um, even to you know just recently, you know, to help my mom out. Even after my dad passed away, he still checked on my mom and picked her up when she needed a ride and everything. I'm just so grateful. I'm so grateful to God for him. Our friend Angel is gone. We can shed tears that he is gone or we can smile because he has lived. We can close our eyes and pray that he will come back or we can open our eyes and see all that he has left. Our hearts can be empty because we can no longer see him or we can be full of the love we shared. We can turn our backs on tomorrow and live yesterday or we can be happy for tomorrow because of yesterday. We can remember him and only that he's gone 
or we can cherish his memory and let it live on. We can cry and close our minds, be empty and turn our backs, or we could do what Angel would want. Smile, open our eyes, love and go on. I have so many um, fond memories of Angel Vantapu. The first one that comes to mind is when I was looking for a place. I did tell him what I was willing to accept and what I really wanted. And guess what? He came through with what I really wanted. And he vouched for me with the landlord and talked him down on the rent. So I'll forever be grateful about that. <coughs> Excuse me. Another memory is um, we were on our way to church. You know I run late. Everybody know who knows me knows I'm running late. So I was zipping in and out, you know, of lanes around the slow people. I get to a light. Somebody honked their horn and rolled his window down. I look, that's Angel, telling him, ma'am, you're late. You're supposed to be at church already. You're on the praise team. I said, well, sir, you're the deacon. You're supposed to be there, too. So long story short is when the light turned green, I took off. I beat him to church, so he was the one that was running late. Uh, and another thing that I'm going to miss is whenever we sung one of his favorite songs, he would be dancing, just praising the Lord, and that was just so infectious. It got everybody else up doing that. And, um, yeah, I'm going to miss that. You know, the praise team think that they're about to sit down. He's like, praise team going to sing y'all, sing, um, sing us out or sing us to close or whatever. And we looking at each other like, we thought we was about to sit down. But okay. So we'll keep on singing that song one more time. Sing it one more time. Sometimes he'll join in, but not too many times. So, anyway, I'm going to miss you, Angel, and um, family. We're here for you for whatever you need. Anything that you need, you know, you can ask it. And we will make it come through like he always did for us. We love you guys. Bye. Hey, guys. Greetings from Florida. Um, how do you pay a short tribute to a giant of a man? I've known Angel since I've known myself. I think at the time that he moved to Texas, my mom was the youth leader there at the church. So he was always at the house, um, youth services, camps. They were always going to concerts, taking trips, doing all kind of things. So he was implanted into my life at a very early age. Um, Angel was one of the first Gleaner Band leaders that I had. For those of you that don't know what Gleaner Band was, that's what you guys call Children's Church Ministries today. Um, that group of Gleaner Band leaders left a lasting impression on me in my life. At that time, it was him, Rose Bonner, and Kimberly Smith. And till this day, I can reflect on some of the um, services that we used to have back in the old building when we moved to the new building. And till this day, some of those things that we were taught help me and sustain me in my Christian walk. Um, when you think about Angel, you know that you're not going to get 50% of him. He was giving you 100% no matter what it was. Gleaner band, directing the choir, being a camp director, being a deacon, being an usher, collecting an offering, which we all know Angel can collect the offering. Angel can get anything out of your pocket. But when you think about it, he never was doing it for himself. Anytime Angel was coming to you for any kind of money, it was always to help somebody else out. That was the type of man that he was. Um, I know a lot of you probably saw my Facebook post, but I'll share it again. Angel taught me how to drive a stick shift. And I would go over to the house and we would get into, I don't remember the car, I remember it was great, but I don't remember the car. And before he could buckle his seatbelt good, he would be like, Raquel, do not wreck my car. And I'm like, Angel, I'm not going to wreck your car. I'm good. We're okay. And um, he taught me how to drive a stick shift to, pre to prepare me for the car that I was going to get, which he helped me at the dealership to get a very good interest rate and a very good deal, which we know that Angel is known for. Um, when I think of him, I think of the scripture, sharp as a serpent and harmless as a dove. Angel was the go-to person for everybody, for everything. 
he knew everything. And if he didn't know what it was or how to get you there or how to get it to you, he knew somebody else that could help you. And he would go and beg a favor from that friend to help you out. Um, that's just the type of man um, that he was. I am having a hard time grasping um, this death. I have never felt anything like this in my life. Um, and I do regret moving and not necessarily keeping in contact the way that I should. And for the last week or so, I've been hearing Bishop Reimer sing on his guitar that he did so many Sundays in the old building and the new, um, give me my flowers while I'm living. And I do wish that I did do a better job at that. Um, but I am at peace that he's with God. He lived his life to live again. Um, I'm at peace that he left here with no regrets. There was nothing that he wanted to do that he didn't do. There was nothing that he had to say that he didn't say. Um, and that gives me a great peace that I know that he's with the Lord and he left here and he lived his fullest life. Um, to the Vanderpool family, um, Amy, AJ, Aaliyah, Shaquille, um, and to Ruby, Dolores, I can't call all of you. I love you guys so much. Um, God will see you through this. I know if it's hitting us this hard, it's hitting you guys just as hard. But I believe that we serve a God of comfort. We serve a God of peace. And these are things that he promised to us. And even though we might not see the good in it, there has to be some good that is going to come out of this. I trust God and believe God that something is something big has to come out of this. Um, I love you guys dearly. East sunny side. This is a void for us too. I love you guys. We will always be family no matter how far away I am. Um, I think about you often. I talk about you guys often. The Vanderpool family will always be in my mouth. I talk about you guys very often because you guys have been that tower of strength for um, Adrian and I. Um, once again, I love you guys. Um, he will be missed. This is a big void for a lot of people. But again, God will see us through. Much love from the state of Florida. Love you guys. Thank you, Uncle Smokes, for everything you've done for me. Um, I, I, my great good godfather. I, I, I miss you and I love you. Uncle Smoke, you was a good guy. My favorite memory of him is when he led us into his house in the babysitting us. Even though we did make a make a lot of, even though. He did make a lot of noise in his house. He did not yell. He's a he was a good man. I'm praying for you. I love you. Love all There have been so many wonderful moments that um, I've shared with Angel Vanderpool um, in my short time here in Texas, almost ten years. He has been an amazing friend to our family, um, an asset to our church. But really, he's been a blessing to our family, the Clarks. Um, he's the godfather of our youngest son, Aiden. And the funniest thing, um, when Aiden was about to be born, um, he was due for another week or so. And my husband had agreed to take a preaching engagement out of town. He would only be gone to a day or two. And so, you know, we agreed as a family, no, that's not a problem, take the trip. Well, I started having some complications and literally the day before he was supposed to fly out, my doctor made me go into the hospital. Well, after we had some discussion, the doctor agreed that he would wait until my husband returned from out of town to um, induce labor and bring Aiden into the world. And so my husband made a phone call. One of the first phone calls he made was to Angel. He said, Angel, I'm going out of town. 
I'm going out of town for ministry. My wife is okay with me going, but I want you to take care of my wife while I'm away. She's going to be in the hospital, but I just need you and Amy to look in on her and make sure she's okay. Well, lo and behold, the very next morning, the day my husband is on the plane, flying, heading out, my doctor walks in and says, Mrs. Clark, I'm sorry, we cannot wait until Monday. We're taking this baby today. So I immediately called Angel and gave Angel the information. I said, do not call my husband. He's in the air. It doesn't matter. You can't call him. Just come to the hospital when you can. And he and Amy and Alea and AJ showed up and they were there. He's like, well, when the pastor lands, I'm calling him and letting him know. And I'm like, no, you're not. Because what he's going to try to do is get on a plane and come back. And no, we don't want him to let him finish his ministry assignment. He'll be home Sunday night. There's nothing that he can do. And Angel went crazy. He's like, I got to call the pastor. I got to tell the pastor what's going on. He told me I got to take care of you. And he was just so adamant. And so I said, Angel, do not tell him. Do not tell him. And I had to like, do not tell him. And so Angel's like, well, if he calls me, I'm not lying to the pastor. I'm not going to lie to the pastor. I said, you don't have to lie, Angel. Just don't answer your phone. And so his wife and his children are laughing. I'm laughing. Angel is not cracking a smile. He is upset. But he kept it. He did not. He just refused to answer the phone. And from what I understand, the whole time I was in the delivery room, Angel was a nervous wreck as if it was Amy in there. But he kept it. And the minute I spoke to my husband, and then the next thing I told him is he couldn't tell anybody the baby was born until I told my husband. And so I said, after he preaches tonight, I'll give him a call and I'll let him know. And sure enough, I did. My husband, he said, I knew something was up because Angel always answers my calls and he did not answer this time. I called and called and he would not answer the phone. I knew something was up, but Angel made me promise never to put him in that predicament again. And he didn't have to work because I wouldn't have any more babies. But I just want to say, Angel, you have been a blessing to our family. We love you. We're going to miss you something crazy. Our church is going to miss you, but our family, we're going to miss you, friend, something more. Love you all. Greetings, family, from the Brown Sisters. Now, we all know that Brother Angel was a very charismatic director for the East Sunnyside Inspirational Choir. And we just want to do some excerpts of some of the songs that he directed. For the rest of my life, I'm free and welcome.
that we could not finish up without doing a little piece of an island song. Because you know, Brother Angel was a appraiser. So I want everybody to get their hanky and wave as we play. I've got my mind made up. has done many wonderful things for us and he deserved our praise now and forevermore. In our lives, we should be like the one who thanked God. Are you thankful for God for something today? Can you thank God for having a house? Can you thank the Lord for having shoes? Can you thank the Lord for having clothes on your back? Can you thank the Lord for having good parents? I would like to pray for you today. In closing, 
Father, thank you for giving us all that we have. We ask that you help us to serve and to thank you always, even when things are difficult. Amen. God bless you.